in this example, we want to apply the disk method, but to a more difficult problem. It actually is quite tricky in terms of its limits of integration, especially. All right, so we have a hemispherical bowl. Hemisphere means half of a sphere. So imagine this is like a big basketball, right? It's a big globe, but we're only looking at the bottom half of it and we're filling the water starting at the bottom like you do, and it fills up. All right, so the bowl has a radius of eight inches. So that means that the radius right here is eight inches, not the radius of the water. That's something different. So that means that this is eight inches right from there to there. All right, we're going to find the volume of the water in the bowl as a function of h height. And we're going to check the special cases where h equals zero and h equals eight. All right, now here's the trick. They didn't tell us where the origin was. So we're going to put the origin right here at the center of this bowl. So we're going to say that's the origin, zero, zero. If that's the case, then we can kind of imagine we've got an axis of rotation going down this thing or up. And that y-axis is our axis of rotation. So we're rotating around. I can see it's an application of the disk method. So we're rotating around. Down at the bottom, we have y equals negative 8. Because if that's the origin up there, then this at the very bottom is negative 8. Which actually means that this is not 8, it's negative 8. All right, now what's really going to be key is not necessarily that this is negative 8, but how do I get to what this level is knowing that's the origin? Because we take our function values from the origin, from the axes, right? If this is the x-axis, oops, I forgot to label that. This is the x-axis coming out, and this is the y-axis down here, well, the bottom part of it, and we're rotating around the y-axis. I need to know this value right here. Because that value right there will be part of my limits of integration. Okay, so if I drop to the bottom of the bowl, that's negative 8. And if I add up h, that gets me to that value. I can't use h itself because h is not based off of the origin. h is going from the bottom of the bowl, right? So h doesn't do me any good. It's negative 8 plus h. It has to do with the fact that we're filling this bowl from the bottom of it, not from up here. Um, if the bowl was tipped upside down, then H would be more valuable to us. If we if we had the base, kind of the circular base down here at the bottom, and we were filling that way. But we're not. We're filling from the tippy bottom, right? So that means that we'll have to make this negative 8 plus H. So negative 8 plus H gets me to this height right here, this value. Going to be very useful for that. We'll keep that in mind. And now we want to think about when we're rotating. So when we rotate we want to have a rectangle in here, and then we would rotate that rectangle around to form the disk of water, right? So there's a disk of water in here that's built from that rectangle. Right? I don't wanna to get too drawing, but that's, that's what's happening. And then you're, of course, stacking those disks of water on top of each other. So if you can imagine, right, you have a disk. Okay. So I'm gonna draw that disk actually, just over here, just to kind of help us. So we have this disk of water right stacked like this the radius of it is what we need and we know the thickness because we know we're rotating around the y-axis so we know that the thickness is dy that's no problem right i got dy right there but what i need is to know what this value is that distance because it's going to change it's not set this the bowl has a radius of 8 but the water doesn't the water has a radius that's a function of y right and I need to find what that is all right because this is out in the x-axis direction so this is x which is r of y so I need to know what that r of y value is Ah, but luckily for me when I cut into a hemisphere I'm gonna have circles right this is a circular disk so because this is a circular disk, let's think about circles for a second. Oops, circle. It's x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? That's the formula for a circle, which in our case, we're inside a bowl that has a radius of eight. All right, so I want x. So I'm gonna make x squared equals 64 minus y squared, which means x is equal to, now it's technically plus or minus, but we only really want the positive side because we're going in the positive direction here. So we're going to make x equal to the square root of 64 minus y squared. All right, so that means that that is that 
radius right there. I've got my radius of rotation, I have my thickness, and I have my boundaries, believe it or not. All right, let's write it out. The volume is pi c to d r of y squared dy, which in my case, r of y is going to be the square root of 64 minus y squared. I'm going to square that. So, that, oop, there's a pi out in front for my, my pi. So pi r squared dy is the thickness. And my integration values are from negative 8, the bottom of the water, to negative 8 plus h, the top of the water. Again, it's not h. h is going from the bottom of the bowl. We need it to go from the origin. That's how functions work, right, from basic algebra. Okay, so this is equal to pi times the integral. Let's see if I can fit this in here. From negative 8 to negative 8 plus h. Actually, I'm just going to write h minus 8. There we go. <laughs> this was easier. But negative 8 plus h is how we think of it, but it's h minus 8. And then it's 64 minus y squared because the squaring will undo the square root. They're going to unravel each other. And then dy. Lovely. Well, that's a lot easier to integrate, right? Other than that h minus 8 thing. We'll have to think about that. Okay, so let's integrate this. So this would be pi times 64y minus 1 third y cubed. And we're going to take that from negative 8 to h minus 8. Now, for the sake of our sanity, I'm actually going to pull the third out because I'm going to have to cube this thing. And I'm just looking ahead. I'm going to have to cube h minus 8. I want no part of a one-third in there. So I can take a one-third out. I can factor it. Now, if I factor it, I need to know what this would have been. So 64 divided by a one-third is 64 times 3. So this would be 192 minus y cubed. Oh, 192y. Sorry, minus y cubed. I'm doing that for the sake of future math, because I know I'm going to have to deal with this eventually. Oops, I forgot my vertical line there. There we go. All right, so again, I factored. Notice, what's 192 divided by 3? 64, right? It works, right? I'm just factoring a 1 -third out from both terms, from both of these terms here. Okay, so then now comes the fun part. So I'm going to take pi over 3, and now I'm going to put h minus 8 into this. So it's going to be... I'm actually going to do it all in blue. 192 times h minus 8 minus h minus 8 cubed. All of that minus, and then I'm going to do it with the pink. So 192 times negative 8 minus negative 8 cubed. And now you can hopefully see why I got rid of the third, because I want a new part of foiling this out three times and then having to deal with a third. And it's just easier if I just pull the three out in front of the whole thing. All right, so this is pi over three times. And now I'm going to distribute, but it won't take me long. So it's 192h minus uh, 1,536. And I'm going to do a little bit of algebra here. I'm going to not only cube this, but distribute the negative as I go. So it's minus h cubed plus 24h squared minus 192h, and then minus a minus 8 cubed would be plus 512. And then this is a minus, well, it's, it's minus a minus, so it's plus uh, 1024. So this whole thing makes 1024. And it's all minus in there, so it makes it positive when you subtract it. Now, if you're thinking what I'm thinking and things cancel, you would be right. <laughs> so for starters, 1,536 is exactly what 512 and 1,024 add up to. So those are gone. And then moreover, 192h minus 192h is gone. And that leaves you pi over 3. And this actually is our following function. Pi over 3 times 24h squared minus h cubed. And this would be in inches 
skewed because they told us the volume was in inches. We have found the volume as a function, a function of height. Done. Now, they asked us to check some special cases, so we will do that. So the special cases would be V of zero, right? Which means the height is zero and there's no water. Actually, let me, let me put it this way. Here. Height is zero, there's no water. If our formula is correct, then we should, hypothetically speaking, find volume of zero. So V of zero is pi over three times 24 minus zero minus zero cubed. And you know what that is? That's zero. Done. No water. It checks out. Now, what if the height was eight? That would mean you have a full bowl. And the V of eight is pi over three times 24 times eight squared minus eight cubed, which would be uh, 1024 pi over three. Now let's see if that works out with geometry because in geometry, we learned that the sphere, the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. Oh, pi r cubed, sorry, I lost my pi. I said it and then I didn't write it. So four thirds pi r cubed. So a volume of a hemisphere would be four thirds pi r cubed times a half because it's half of a sphere. So our bowl is, has a radius of eight. So what's four sixths times pi times eight cubed? If you think it's 1024 pi over three, you would be right. And let me prove it to you with Desmos. So if I go to Desmos, oop, not that one. It's over here. There it is. All right, so there's my volume function right there. V of zero is zero. V of eight is 1072.33. Now, if you want to know what these are exact values, like I'm getting the 1024, you can take pi out of the formula and put one in instead, because then you can see that they're fractions, right? And similarly, if you want to check with geometry, just take the pi out and make it a fraction and you'll be able to see, oh, yep, they are in fact the same. And I would just kind of throw pi in there to make it work, right? So lo and behold, they are equal to each other. The V of eight, which is 1024 over three, is in fact equal to the um, geometry formula for a hemisphere volume. I will put the pi back in so we can see what those are. Oop, not down there, there. 1072.33. So we can say that these are both 1000, 72.33, this would be inches cubed. And it's out with geometry. And it backs up our formula.